Mizzou has a new athletic director. Desiree Reed Francois comes to Columbia after spending four years as the AD at UNLV. This is her second athletic director job, but she has more than 25 years of experience in college athletics, including stops at Virginia Tech, Cincinnati, and Tennessee. And here's a fun fact. She actually oversaw the Volunteers men's basketball team when Mizzou basketball coach Conzo Martin was the head coach of the Vols. During her time at UNLV, she oversaw the construction of more than $70 million worth of facility upgrades. In a release from Mizzou, she says, quote, we have a proud and storied tradition. We compete in the premier athletic conference of the country, and perhaps most importantly, we have a collective desire to be great. Reed Francois is the first ever female athletic director at Mizzou, and she actually has a unique connection with a former member of Mizzou's football staff. Here's ABC 17's Natalie Jones. Desiree Reed Francois marks a new era of Mizzou athletics. But more than that, she represents the direction of college athletics as a whole. I appreciate someone that does not let boundaries stop them, and she never settles. Reed Francois comes to Columbia after spending four years as the athletic director at UNLV, which is also where she met Brittany Bain. Well, I was fortunate enough to hop onto UNLV's football staff, uh, per Coach Arroyo and Desiree. Um, January of 2020. Before that, she worked on Barry Odom's football staff at Mizzou. Bame was one of only a handful of female director of football operations in the country. Candidly, it was the first time I ever got fired, and I didn't know how to find my way, in essence, and she really grabbed her arms and put them around me and helped me get through it. The California native is not only the first female athletic director in MU history. Don't tell someone like that no. But the first female AD at any public institution in the SEC. Head coaching job, AD, it's a very lonely seat. And I think that she uh, definitely shows and she's vulnerable to put her family out there and show like, hey, it is hard but you can do it. In a statement, UM President Moon Choi said today is a, quote, transformational day for Mizzou athletics. The elephant in the room, the diversity of it. I mean, when I went there, <laughs> I mean, uh, candidly, when someone said it was diverse, I was like, hmm. As a result of taking the helm of UNLV athletics, Reed Francois was the first Hispanic female and woman of color to serve as an AD at the FBS level. Aligned very much so with that diversity portion. Um, that I think Missouri talks about a lot. With the hire, she becomes one of just six active female athletic directors in the Power Five. If you want to compete um, in SEC, you're going to have to open up these doors that were never opened up before. Fame says she's excited for Desiree the person. You could talk about something and she could pull a fact from a book that she read and you're like, I don't know where that came from, but wow, that's awesome. But also for Desiree, the AD. And she's just going to elevate that place um, to a whole nother level. As she makes history in Como. Desiree, M-I-Z. Meanwhile, Mizzou Fall Camp is off and running in just 27 days. The Tigers will kick off the season against Central Michigan. ABC 17's Natalie Jones is back. She tells us why installing a new defense will be a major focus for the Tigers next few weeks. Defense can make or break a football team. It's the mindset of trying to score on defense, you know, that has always been the, the nature of this system wherever I've been. Especially when it comes to Mizzou, as first year defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes is installing a new scheme. It just feels different. I can't really explain the feeling, but it just feels so much different this year. It doesn't look quite the same as years past. But it does rely on one thing that Tiger fans are pretty familiar with, D-line zoo. It all starts up front, you know, uh, coming off the ball, creating a new line of scrimmage. I wouldn't say we're comfortable, you know, we're never comfortable, you know. Um, you know, uh, defense alignment, I know for a fact, you know, we love to be miserable, so. <laughs> Over the past few years, MU has played a lot of man defense, but now things are shifting to zone. Guys are understanding how to play with their number one weapon, which are their eyes, and still being aggressive and trying to get out to the quarterback. With two days of fall camp already in the books, there's still a ways to go. It's one thing to put it on a whiteboard, and it's a totally different thing when, when 20, you know, 22 other people or 20 other, 21 other people are moving around. That's what makes football so complicated. In order to get where they want to be, Coach Drink says he's going to need more. I don't know if they expected me to carry the day with the energy, but, but we didn't have it. And we, we got to improve. 
Uh, we, we, we got to change the way that we, we got to practice with more urgency. More energy and more conversations. The team goes how we go. And if the leaders don't have energy, the leaders aren't up there, like, getting everybody excited, getting everybody going, then they won't, they won't do it. But, hey, just two practices down, still 23 more to go. Reporting in Columbia, Natalie Jones, ABC 17 Sports. Well, the Mizzou defense will be without linebacker Cameron Wilkins. The former three-star prospect has entered the transfer portal, and that likely paves the way for Blaze Aldridge, transfer from Rice, and Devin Nicholson to handle the linebacker duties, at least for starters. There's no question Connor Bazelak is the starting quarterback. The third-year QB is technically still a freshman, but the Ohio native has plenty of experience. Bazelak just completed his first full, healthy offseason. He says he learned a lot at the Manning Passing Academy he went to earlier this summer, and he's ready to build off of his SEC Freshman of the Year season. Mizzou will be back at practice tomorrow morning. You can expect full interviews and extended video up on our website, abc17news.com, by the afternoon.